This episode of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast is brought to you by Legacy Staffs, which are crafted by the Brazos Walking Stick Company in Waco, Texas. You can go to BrazosSticks.com and use the name Mac Payne, one word, at the checkout and get 10% off your next order of the Legacy Staff or Cane of your own design. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1829er of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who served there, as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. This episode is part three of a series of five episodes where I will be talking about Air America. Most every Vietnam veteran will tell you they've heard of Air America. I have found in doing this research, there are numerous misconceptions out there about Air America. The purpose of these five episodes is to stamp out ignorance about Air America. I've heard all sorts of things about Air America. Most of them are wrong. Most everybody will tell you that Air America was owned by the CIA. They don't base that on anything other than hearsay. I got news for you. That's not correct. The CIA did not own Air America. Another thing you often hear about Air America is they were nothing more than a drug transportation organization. That is also untrue. I hate it when an organization that has done so much good for this country gets maligned with all these false accusations. In previous episodes, we talked about how Air America got started. I think it's interesting to note that General Claire Chenault, who ran the Flying Tigers over in China before and during World War II, was the main force that got Air America started. It went through a few iterations with names and organizations, but Claire Chenault, the pride of Commerce, Texas, is the person who got the whole thing started. In this episode, I'm going to dispel some of the false rumors you might have heard about Air America. I'm going to be sharing portions of a book, The Truth About Air America and the CIA, Honor Denied. It was written by Alan Cates. A portion of that book is on the Air America website. That's where most of this material is coming from. I also want to remind you to please go over to the podcast website, VietnamVeteranNews.com, check out episode 1829er, and you will find two books that have been added to the recommended reading list. Both of them are by none other than Alan Cates. I encourage you to go there and buy a copy of each one and read them. If you do that, you will be one of the most educated people in your neighborhood about Air America. Just think about how you can impress all your friends at your next get-together. If we ever have any more, hopefully we will after this COVID-1984 thing is going away, which I'm sure it will sometime in the near future. In this episode, I'm going to share with you the parts of Alan Kate's book, that talks about some of the things that Air America did. Many of these were in Laos. They did a lot of work over there because we weren't supposed to be there. You may remember in a previous episode we mentioned that in the 1962 Geneva Accords, we said we would stay out of Laos. Many countries signed it, including North Vietnam. Before the ink was dry on that agreement, we were out of there. Guess who stayed? That's right, the North Vietnamese. Communists are born liars. They demonstrated it right there when they signed an agreement stating 
they would stay out of Laos. They just turned on the coal and sent more people and material there. Air America did a lot of good work in Laos because it gave our government what they call plausible deniability. That means it would cover up some of their lying, which our government seems to do on a regular basis. Just ask the Flathead Indians out in Montana. I hate to say it, but it is what it is. Let's take a look at this next portion. It's going to tell us more about what Air America was doing in Laos. I'll give you a little preview of what's coming up. Did you know that only one time in history did a helicopter shoot down a fixed-wing aircraft? Well, you know now. An Air America helicopter shot down a Russian fixed-wing aircraft in Laos. That's what's in store for you. Without any further ado, let's take a look at part three of Air America Unmasked. Dateline, Air America website. Activity in Laos in 1963 was minimal, but tragedy still occurred. An Air America C-46 was shot down east of Savannah Cat. The rear crew members bailed out, but the pilot, John C. Cheney and his newly hired co-pilot, Charles G. Herrick, were killed when the plane blew up in midair. The crewmen who bailed out were captured by the Patet Lao, one American, Eugene H. De Bruin, and five indigenous air freight specialists, commonly called kickers, became prisoners of war and endured inhumane hardships for several years. One of the survivors, Visit in Terra Tat, escaped after almost three and a half years in captivity. His courageous story is heartbreaking. All the other kickers died in captivity. Eugene de Bruin is listed as MIA but presumed dead. In 1964, the Navy used F-8 Crusaders as photo reconnaissance aircraft for flying over the eastern Lao border to try to verify North Vietnamese activity heading south on what was later called the Ho Chi Minh Trail. At one point, an F-8 pilot bailed out. An Air America tried to rescue but failed after encountering intense ground fire. The pilot escaped, but the Navy insisted on search and rescue aircraft being available in case more aircraft were shot down. By December 1965, 170 U.S. aircraft had been lost during interdiction operations called Rolling Thunder. Initially, northern Laos was too far away from Thailand to be useful for search and rescue. The U.S. Air Force kept helicopters in Laos, but the risk of being captured and publicly exposed as violators of the accord was too high. The Secretary of State ordered Air America as primary search and rescue for northern Laos. Air America once again took up a combat role and five fixed-wing pilots, John Wyron, Rick Byrne, Ed Eckholt, Joe Hazen, and Tom Jenny, and later Don Rums, were secretly trained in the T-28D Trojan and used as close air support for search and rescue operations. The exact number of rescues made by Air America is not exactly known, but estimated at more than 100. You get that? Air America was rescuing downed aviators, not shipping contraband material. The U.S. Air Force used enlisted men as forward air controllers in Laos in 1963. They were called butterflies and flew on Air America Helio couriers and Politis porters. It was a successful program and not one person died or was injured, but the commanding general of the U.S. Air Force Tactical Air Command wanted commissioned officers who were rated fighter pilots. In 1966, the U.S. Air Force founded the Raven program flying Cessna 01 Bird Dog aircraft. It was an aggressive and hazardous program, and a significant percentage of the pilots were killed from enemy gunfire. They, too, needed logistical support. Air America handled the maintenance for the aircraft, hauled white phosphorus rockets for spotting targets from Thailand to various places in Laos, and acted as SAR for downed pilots. 
U.S. Air Force military strikes in Laos escalated throughout the 1960s, but the weather in Laos made flying difficult. The U.S. Air Force needed navigational gear, and a secret radar site was installed in northern Laos on one of the tallest mountains in the area. Air America supplied the location with food and other items and was jointly responsible for emergency evacuation of the site should that become necessary. That secret radar site the Air Force established in northern Laos was called Lima Site 85. If you'd like to know more about Lima Site 85, check out episode 1016 of this podcast. It was an amazing story. I think the name they gave it, Lima Site 85, was perfect for what they had there. Continuing with Alan Cates' piece. The site was manned by U.S. Air Force technicians with no combat training or experience. From the Chico report, that's a report about operations in Thailand. It states, as conceived in evacuation plans, the decision to evacuate was reserved for the ambassador down in Vien Chan. First priority of evacuees was allocated to the 13 TSQ TACAN personnel. However, enough helicopters were to be provided to permit a total of 155 people to be lifted out. The others, guerrillas, would be extracted when the local area defense commander deemed appropriate. Five helicopters, three Air Force and two Air America were assigned as the force required to accomplish the evacuation. To provide an immediate capability, two Air America helicopters were to remain overnight each night at nearby Lima Site 98. U.S. Air Force helicopters were to come from Thailand-based resources. Subsequently, some U.S. Air Force messages expressed the desire for Air America helicopters to remain overnight at Site 85, not 98. However, nothing changed. It was feared that a helicopter presence at Lima Site 85 would provoke an enemy attempt to destroy the lucrative targets. If they had been destroyed, the planned emergency lift capability would have vanished. But the point was well taken for weather also might have disrupted the rescue flight from Lima Site 98 to Lima Site 85. Therefore, Air America did have jurisdiction and authority to perform military activities in Laos. The Checo report, also with the top secret directive from the U.S. State Department, is prima facie proof for that claim. Here's the historic record-breaking event. In January 1968, two Russian-built AN-2 Colts, which were bi-wing aircraft, bombed the site. Just as the bombing was going on, an Air America helicopter was arriving with supplies and observed the attack. The helicopter pilot, Ted Moore, flew alongside one of the attacking aircraft, and the flight mechanic, Glenn Woods, shot the plane down using a survival rifle that most of the flight mechanics carried should they be forced down in hostile territory. It was the first time a helicopter ever downed a military fixed-wing aircraft. Here, here to Glenn Woods the Air America flight mechanic who brought down a Russian-made fixed-wing aircraft that was attacking Lima Site 85. I hope Glenn Woods got some sort of recognition for that, in addition to what I am giving here on this podcast. Congratulations, Glenn Woods. We appreciate your bravery and sharpsmanship. Continuing. In March 1968, a trained North Vietnamese unit attacked the site by scaling a cliff thought impossible to climb. The site fell and several technicians were killed. Two Air America Bell helicopters were dispatched from L-20 alternate. Captain Phil Goddard was in one and Captain Ken Wood in the other. Goddard landed on the lower portion of the site and evacuated key CIA personnel. Wood could not land on top of the mountain and had to hover out of ground effect along the side. He was able to extract seven technicians. The last one in was Master Sergeant Richard Loy Etchberger. 
He helped load the wounded into slings and fought off the advancing North Vietnamese troops. Rusty Irons, the flight mechanic, assisted evacuees into the helicopter. Sadly, as the helicopter took off, Sergeant Etzberger was mortally wounded by an enemy bullet. The bullet also shattered the flight mechanic's survival rifle and nearly wounded him. The survivors were fortunate the pilot wasn't hit. Master Sergeant Etchberger was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, which was deserved. Woods and Irons received nothing. That is the end of Episode 3 in this series about Air America. Now you know more about what Air America was doing in Laos during the war. I encourage you to go to Episode 1016 of the podcast and see the challenges of flying a helicopter in and out of Lima Site 85. That'll give you a better appreciation for the bravery of Air America pilots. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the Richard Nixon years of the Vietnam War and how they affected Air America and its mission. Don't miss it. It's going to be another exciting episode. Also, for your information, over at the podcast website, VietnamVeteranNews.com, in episode 1829 there will be a picture of the Russian-made aircraft that was shot down by Glenn Woods, a flight mechanic on an Air America helicopter. The only time a fixed-wing military aircraft was ever shot down by a helicopter. I encourage you to take a look at that. I guarantee you it will improve your opinion of Air America personnel. This is Mac Payne closing out episode 1829 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. Thank you so much for coming to listen to these stories. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more because there is much more exciting news about the Air America organization coming your way on the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. How about that? Ain't that a mess?